Welcome back to Reliable Prepper, where we don't just skim the surface, we dig deep into the issues that matter most to you. Today we're talking about something that's making headlines but not getting the attention it deserves. Mpox. This isn't just another viral outbreak. It's a sign of things to come. And if you're not prepared now, you could be facing a much larger problem down the road. But before we dive into the details, I need to ask you to take action. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and share this video with your prepping community. Knowledge is power, but that power is only as strong as the people who wield it. Let's make sure we're all in this together. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into what's really happening with Mpox, what they aren't telling you, and why it's so important that we take this seriously, now. Mpox, formerly known as monkeypox, isn't new. It's been around for decades, primarily affecting isolated regions in Africa. However, recent outbreaks have shown that it's spreading faster and wider than before. And there's more to the story than just the virus itself. First, let's talk about the different strains or clades of Mpox. There are two major clades, clade 1 and clade 2. Clade 1, also known as the Congo Basin clade, is more severe, with a higher mortality rate and more aggressive symptoms. Clade 2, the West African clade, is generally less severe but still dangerous, especially to those with weakened immune systems or underlying health conditions. The concerning part is that both clades are now being reported in regions outside of Africa, and their impact is spreading across the globe. Mpox spreads primarily through close contact, skin-to-skin, -skin, body fluids, and respiratory droplets. It can also spread through contaminated objects like bedding and clothing. This isn't a virus that just goes away with minimal effort. Once it's in a community, it can spread quickly, especially in dense urban environments or places where people come into close contact regularly. What's concerning is how this outbreak has the potential to overwhelm healthcare systems that are already stretched thin. We saw what happened during the COVID pandemic when hospitals were overrun and there weren't enough resources to go around. Mpox has the potential to do the same, especially if clade one continues to spread. And it's not just the healthcare system that's at risk. This virus could have a massive impact on supply chains and that's where we need to start paying attention. The global supply chain is already fragile. We've seen it over the past few years, shortages of everything from food to medical supplies to basic household goods. And now, with the Mpox outbreak growing, we're facing even more strain on those already stretched thin systems. Think about how this virus spreads. It's not just affecting people, it's affecting the infrastructure that keeps our society running. Workers in manufacturing, transportation, and retail are getting sick, which means fewer people are available to keep the supply chain moving. Ports are seeing delays, distribution centers are struggling to keep up with demand, and stores are starting to experience shortages again. One of the things the media isn't focusing on is the impact Mpox is having on global shipping and logistics. International trade is slowing down, and this will inevitably affect the availability of essential goods in your local stores. Items like food, medicine, and even household essentials could become harder to find as the virus spreads and supply chains are disrupted. If you're not prepared for this, you're going to be in trouble. It's not just about having enough food and water for a few weeks. It's about making sure you have what you need to survive for months if the supply chain takes a serious hit. This means stocking up on non-perishable food, water, hygiene products, and medical supplies. Don't wait until the shelves are empty. Get what you need now while you still can. Let's talk about sheltering in place because if things continue to escalate, there's a good chance you'll need to hunker down for an extended period of time. And that doesn't just mean having enough food and water. It means having a plan to keep your family safe, healthy, and secure while the world outside is in chaos. First, you need to establish a quarantine plan within your home. If someone in your household gets infected, you'll need to isolate them from the rest of the family. Do you have a designated room that can be used for quarantine? Is it equipped with its own bathroom or at least close to one? You'll want to limit the spread of the virus within your own home as much as possible. And that means minimizing contact with the infected person. Next, think about hygiene. You're going to need a steady supply of soap, hand sanitizer, and disinfectants. Make sure you're stocked up on laundry detergent and cleaning supplies as well. Mpox can linger on surfaces, 
so regular cleaning is going to be essential if you want to avoid spreading the virus within your household. And while we're on the subject of hygiene, let's not forget about the basics. Toilet paper, feminine hygiene products, toothpaste, shampoo. These are the kinds of things people forget about until it's too late. Don't be that person scrambling for essentials when the stores are empty. Stock up now. Now let's get into one of the most important aspects of being prepared, security. Because if we've learned anything from past crises, is that when things go wrong, people start to panic. And when people panic, they do desperate things. We're already seeing rising tensions in some areas as fear spreads faster than the virus itself. When people can't get what they need, whether it's food, medicine, or other essentials, they start looking for ways to get it by any means necessary. This is where your home defense strategy comes into play. Start by securing your home, reinforce your doors and windows, install security cameras if you haven't already, and make sure your locks are in good working order. If you have a home security system, make sure it's up to date and functional. If you don't, now might be the time to invest in one. And remember, it's not just about keeping people out, it's about keeping your family safe inside. Consider organizing with your neighbors, Form a mutual aid group with other like-minded individuals in your community who are also prepping. In times of crisis, it's important to have allies you can rely on. Share information, pool resources, and keep an eye out for each other. And finally, make sure you're prepared to defend your home if it comes to that. Whether it's through non-lethal means like pepper spray or more serious measures, make sure you know the laws in your area and that you're prepared to protect your family if necessary. Now that we've covered the immediate steps you need to take to prepare for MPOX, let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. Because here's the thing, MPOX isn't just a health crisis. It's a symptom of something much larger. We've been dealing with the fallout of a fragile global system for years now, and MPOX is just the latest in a series of crises that show how close we are to a complete breakdown. We've seen how quickly a virus can disrupt our daily lives, and MPOX is no different. But it's not just the virus that's the problem. It's the ripple effects it causes throughout society. When healthcare systems are overwhelmed, when supply chains break down, when people panic and start acting out of fear, that's when things get dangerous. As preppers, we need to be thinking not just about how to survive a virus, but how to survive the collapse of the systems we depend on every day. That means preparing for a world where food, water, and medical supplies are scarce, where law and order are no longer guaranteed, and where you're on your own. So how do we prepare for something like this? It starts with understanding that MPOX is just one piece of the puzzle. To be truly prepared, you need to think about all the ways in which the systems around you could fail and how you can mitigate the impact on your life. Let's start with food security. We already talked about stockpiling food and water for a three month period, but what happens after that? What if the supply chain disruptions continue longer than anticipated? That's where self-sufficiency comes into play. If you haven't started already, now is the time to think about growing your own food. Even if you live in a small apartment, there are ways to grow your own vegetables using container gardening or hydroponic systems. If you have more space, consider setting up a more extensive garden that can provide for your family long term. It's not just about having food on hand. It's about having the skills and knowledge to produce your own food when the grocery store shelves are empty. The same goes for water. Having a supply of bottled water is great for short-term emergencies. But what happens when that runs out? You need to have a plan for sourcing and purifying water. Whether that means rainwater collection, accessing a nearby stream, or using a well, make sure you have a way to secure clean, drinkable water for the long haul. And don't forget about filtration and purification methods. Invest in a good water filtration system and learn how to use it properly. Having a water source is one thing, but ensuring that water is safe to drink is another. Waterborne diseases are often overlooked in times of crisis, but they can quickly become a major threat, especially when healthcare systems are overwhelmed and access to clean water is limited. Another thing to consider is having alternative ways to cook and preserve food. If your access to electricity or gas becomes limited, how will you prepare your meals? Consider investing in portable stoves, solar ovens, or even learning how to cook using a fire pit. And when it comes to preserving food, methods like canning, dehydrating, and fermenting become vital skills that allow you to stretch your food supplies over longer periods of time. 
No prepper can survive entirely alone. While self-sufficiency is the goal, we must remember that being part of a community is equally important. In times of crisis, having a network of like-minded individuals can make the difference between thriving and barely getting by. If you haven't already, start building connections within your local community. Look for people who share your mindset and are equally prepared. Whether it's neighbors, friends, or fellow preppers in your area, having a support network is crucial. In times of crisis, you may need to pool resources, share skills, and even provide security for one another. Consider forming or joining a local bartering network. As supply chain issues worsen and access to essential goods becomes limited, the ability to barter for needed items will be invaluable. It could be as simple as trading surplus vegetables from your garden for medical supplies or offering your mechanical skills in exchange for food. Having a community where resources can be shared will give you a much better chance of surviving longer-term disruptions. One of the most important things you can do as a prepper is to stay informed. The situation with MPOX is constantly evolving, and you need to be aware of the latest developments so you can adapt your plans accordingly. Keep an eye on credible sources of information, both on the virus itself and on the broader social and economic impacts. It's also important to stay vigilant against misinformation. In times of crisis, rumors and false information spread like wildfire, and making decisions based on inaccurate data can be dangerous. Stick to trusted sources like the World Health Organization, WHO, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and reputable news outlets that provide reliable updates. But don't just passively consume information, act on it. If the situation starts to escalate, be ready to adjust your plans. Maybe that means moving to a safer location, ramping up your home defense, or rationing your supplies. The key to survival is adaptability and the more flexible you are, the better your chances of making it through any crisis. So what's the takeaway here? MPOX is just the beginning. It's a catalyst, a warning sign of much larger systemic failures that could come crashing down at any moment. And when those systems fail, it's not going to be the people who waited for help who survive. It's going to be the people who prepared. This is my call to action for you. Don't wait for things to get worse before you start prepping. Don't wait until the shelves are empty or the hospitals are full. Take action now. Review your supplies. Make sure you have everything you need to shelter in place for at least three months. Start thinking about how you can become more self-sufficient. Learn new skills, whether it's growing food, purifying water, or providing medical care. And most importantly, connect with other preppers in your community. We are stronger together, and the more prepared we are as a group, the better our chances of surviving whatever comes next. And once you've done that, share this video. Share it with your friends, your family, your neighbors, anyone who needs to hear this message, because knowledge is power, but that power is only as strong as the people who wield it. Looking ahead, MPOX may not be the last crisis we face. In fact, it's likely just one of many challenges we'll see in the coming years as the world continues to grapple with instability on multiple fronts, whether it's pandemics, economic downturns, political unrest, or natural disasters. But that's why we prep. We don't know what's coming next, but we know that being prepared puts us in the best position to face whatever happens. Prepping isn't just about hoarding supplies, it's about building resilience. It's about having the knowledge, skills, and resources to not only survive, but to thrive when the world around us is in chaos. So, I encourage you to keep learning. Keep building your skills. Keep strengthening your network and keep adding to your stores. Prepping is a lifestyle, not a one-time event. And the more you invest in it now, the more it will pay off when the time comes. In closing, I want to remind you that MPOX isn't just a health crisis. It's a wake-up call. It's a reminder of how fragile our world is and how quickly things can fall apart. But as preppers, we don't panic. We plan, we prepare, and we persevere. Take everything we've talked about today and put it into action. Don't wait for the next wave of lockdowns or shortages to start prepping. Start now, and you'll be ready when the time comes. Review your supplies, build your community, and strengthen your skills. The world may be uncertain, but your preparedness doesn't have to be. And finally, remember to share this video with others who need to hear this message. We're all in this together, and the more people who are prepared, the better off we'll all be. Stay vigilant, stay prepared, and as always, stay reliable. Until next time, keep prepping.